Hi, I'm Paul from Test Data Services, and this video is going to extend from the very basic introductory video, uh, the previous one, which showed a very simple Gatling test in LoadRunner. And this is going to be the first of two videos which show a sophisticated test. Now, this first one will step through a substantial business process and it will run at a fairly high rate. And, that, and you can look at uh, all of the uh, script or the script for this and the business process will be included in the script description below. So you can actually follow along or even run it yourself. Um, so I'll put, um, I'll put chapters into this video so you can um, skip ahead as you need to. So the business process that I'm going to show you in this test is a sign up to a production grade uh, website and it's been served by AWS Cognito as a package. Uh, so in this case, this is what the screen looks like when you do the sign up. When I type a password in here, testing one, two, three, four for fun, um, uh, when I sign this up, it's going to send an email out to this email address. I then have to uh, grab that email, look for the code in the email, and then type it into the next screen. So I'm going to show you that, and that will make more sense then for the script and what the script is doing. The next video after this will have quite a lot of extra checking in it to handle uh, various situations which are not covered in this script, and it will handle a dynamic um, workload profile. It won't be a simple profile. It'll be a dynamic one over time with peaks and troughs. So I, I thought instead of doing one giant uh, video, I'll do this one and split it up. So this is the business process. So this business process is about to sign up this user test666 at testdata.email to this website, test data services demo auth AP Southeast to amazoncognito.com. You can, I'll put this link below. You can actually sign this up yourself. You won't get any benefit from signing up, but you can just see the process. And if you want, you can try scripting it, knock yourself out. Um, I've got a limit of 20 outbound emails per second on my account. So if you try and do more than that, it's going to be a problem. Um, so just to show you, if I go to the user pools from my AWS account and I search for test 666, there's no user there. Uh, if I use this uh, call, I'll put a link up the top right hand side uh, to show. If I use this call, um, I can fetch any emails that have been sent to that address. I just have to put the email address in and the from domain. Uh, and if I want to clear any emails, I do this call. So the script is going to run all these calls. That's what I'm just showing you. So the first thing I'm going to do is submit this um, page. Now it's asking for um, what's the verification code. So just to show you that it really is part way in, we can see we've got an unconfirmed uh, account, emails not being verified, and that was at 7.36 a.m. on the 15th. If I go to my UTC clock here, it's 7.36 a.m. on the 15th. So you can see that was really that one. Uh, if I now refresh this page for looking for a message, we can see we've got a message, and this is the real production email message. Uh, so the verification code, your verification code is 829276, copy that, and I can now paste it in, confirm account. Great, so we're done. Now if I go to my user pools in Cognito, and I now refresh that page, now we can see the email is confirmed, which is good. So that is the business process we're going to do. Now we're going to do that in this Gatling script um, 3,000 times, and we're going to spread those 3,000 over 150 seconds. So that means we're doing 20 per second, so 20 signups per second. Um, and we're going to have a maximum of four minutes. So unlike a typical load runner scenario where you specify pacing, in this case, we're, we're actually specifying the arrival rate, if you like, and we're specifying it to a specific level. And we don't care how long it takes to sign up. Um, on average, we'll average about 20 per second. Uh, and the reason for that, like I said, is my account in AWS is limited to 20 outbound emails per second because they're real emails. Um, so if I push the start button on this scenario, then I'm going to walk you through the script and show you what the script is doing. Um, but just before I show you line by line what the script's doing, I will just 
show you that the script is really working. Uh, I've got one other call here. This call is um, one of the lines in the script is updating a, um, a, a tagged value in test data services every time a new user is being added. So we've got Robert, Jose, Jessica, Jack, Jacob. If I take one of these, copy, and then go to user pools, paste, and enter, it, we should see it's unconfirmed. Now, if we refresh a few times, uh, within about 20 seconds, it should say it's confirmed. So let's just see if that's true. Hopefully it will be unconfirmed, confirmed. So it works, that's good. Uh, now we're seeing a few errors over here. That's because some of the users we're putting in are duplicates. There's only two and a half million um, entries in the test data service um, database that I'm using and you've got access to. If we were to go to um, users, we'll see that there's like 100,000 already um, signed up um, to this, to this um, group, which is quite a lot. Uh, maybe you won't, oh, here we go, 97,000. So we've, we're gonna have a, a fairly substantial rate of duplicates. Um, this is what the script is doing. It is um, specifying that the base URL for the request will be api testdataservices.com.au. First call is getting a random user. We're fetching from that out of the JSON response with these extractors, the identity UID, email address, physical address, names, date of birth, and password. Uh, we are then, um, because it's a production system and what happens in production systems, unlike demo systems or training systems, you have to deal with real world problems. And a real world problem is a date of birth is often in a particular format. In this case, day, day, slash, month, month, slash, year, year, year. Uh, but the JSON number for a month of birth will be say seven, but the, the actual number represented in the field has to be 07 because it's a string with a leading zero in that format. So this code here is doing a simple test. If it's less than 10 for the day, add a, pad it with a left zero. If the month is less than 10, do the same. And um, then merge them together and save them as formatted date of birth. Then we visit that page that I showed you earlier, uh, which brings up the form with all the details on it. And from that, we're actually checking that there's a regular expression matching this, which is for the CSRF. If we get that, we save it. If we don't, we fail. Uh, then we clear out the emails. You saw me do that call manually. Then we uh, save that email address, which is um, this call here. Uh, now that there's no more anymore because we've, we've now finished our test. Um, we um, save that email. Uh, then we submit all of the details, which is the post, HTTP post here, and we're putting in the username, which is the email address, and the birth date, which is that format of date of birth, and so on. Um, uh, then we wait 20 seconds, this is hard coded. In the next script, I'll have it in a while loop, it's just a bit more sophisticated. And we are looking for your verification code is, and we're saving that as verification code as a regular expression. We then have to, um, extract the appropriate number from that. So we're dropping the 26 characters from the left to do that. We're saving that as new code. And then um, we submit that as another post with the CSRF, the username, destination, and right at the end over here, the actual code, new code here. And new code is this here, which is the extracted code that's been trimmed. So that's the actual test. And what we're doing was we're ramping up 3000 new sessions over 150 seconds with a maximum of time of four minutes. So now that we've run that and the test is now finished, we can see past transactions. Let's just have a look. 3000 of get random user, which is good. We had about 10% error rate because of duplicates and such things. Uh, not just uh, that, but uh, that's the main one, which we'll deal with in the next script. But you can see that we've actually signed up um, 2,743 new users in three minutes, which is 
pretty good. Uh, so now if we go into analysis, we've run our test. While the test was running, we are actually able to see in real time what the response times are as they're occurring, what hits per second and, and all of that, or response times per second if we had a whole lot of 500 errors or 400 or 4XX HTTP responses, we'd see those. Uh, but we can go in here now and we can do post-test analysis and it's doing the complete analysis. I just wait for it to complete before I look at the graphs because they'll change a bit. But we can see the numbers here, uh, 3,000 uh, successful um, uh, calls to get random user and clear old emails and such. Now we're loading the analysis. So I've got here running users. Now you might remember I said we're specifying the rate of new users to be 20 new users to do one iteration each uh, per second for up to 3,000 users or 150 seconds. What that translated to was about 440 users most of the time. So that gives you an idea of how long most users ran for. It must have been what, 22 seconds or something. Um, hits per second, we can see it's varying between 145 and 215. Transactions per second, we can see here there's one line going up, which is the first stage of the script. And then these two lines going up about 20 seconds later is when we start to have users, the script actually finishing that first um, stage with the 20 second think time. And then you can see that we are um, running at pretty close to 20 signups per second for a fair bit of the test and then it stops. Average transaction response times, we can see here what the response times are. This is a one second scale, so you can see it's um, pretty good, about 0.4 second at worst. And um, we've even got transaction uh, percentiles, we can see that nicely here as well. So that is a quick walkthrough of um, a fairly sophisticated business process. And the next video will have this combined with a sophisticated scenario and workload profile and a few enhancements to the script to make it a bit more um, real world and, and up to a decent standard for including into a performance engineering test cycle. Hope you found this useful and check out the links below for more information. Have a great day.